In a twist of fate, my helicopter tour and charter company actually performed tours over Block Island. And when we were flying those tours, they just so happened to be building the Block Island wind farm. I noticed that they had a heli deck that was being unutilized at the time, did a bit of research and saw the fact that there was actually no service provider here in the New England region capable of providing quality offshore uh, transportation uh, with the standards that are expected in the offshore business. Uh, with that, I uh, ended up doing some research, found out about heli service in Germany, the world's largest provider of offshore wind helicopter services. Uh, and um, that's how we found ourselves here with Heli Service USA. With our partnership, we we're able to use their branding, so we're able to provide branding that customers are used to. It's a proven and trusted product. Uh, we have full access to all of those policies and procedures that they've developed over years and years of offshore wind operations that just don't exist uh, anywhere here in the United States. So we're able to leverage those, um, but also very proud to be a you know, US-owned business here in the United States. We are very proud to operate the AW169. Uh, as far as we are concerned, it is just about the only helicopter that will do this job and do it really well. There's a, a very unique set of features that enable the 169 to do both hoist operations and crew change. Under Part 133 Class D in the United States, uh, you are required to be able to maintain single engine hover performance during a hoist. And what that means is that if you were to lose an engine, that you're able to safely uh, terminate that hoist operation, bring the person back into the cabin, depending on the scenario, and then fly away. Our customers also have very high safety standards and require the same. Uh, there are very few helicopters on the market that can meet that performance requirement that you have. Uh, the AW169 has tremendous single engine hover performance. Uh, it enables us to go out there and deploy teams to the top of these turbines very safely. Additionally, it has a conventional tail rotor uh, for hoist operations, particularly in a windy environment. It's nice to have a conventional tail rotor. Uh, it's much more traditional cabin layout than uh, what you may see from an H145. That enables us to put that door back and have really great access for the technicians. Uh, it's, it's a really great hoist platform for all of those reasons. The pilots have phenomenal visibility out the front. Uh, there's a lot of glass on your right side, so as you look out that window, you're able to get great visual references on the turbine that you're hoisting off of, which is, of course, critical. Uh, we think two pilots are absolutely imperative to providing a safe product. Uh, our customers feel the same way. I believe that's one of the reasons that they've gone with us. Uh, you never want a single point of failure in an aircraft or any aspect of your operation. By having two pilots, you not only eliminate that single point of failure, but now you, you have started to get two eyes on everything. You're able to implement multi-crew standard operating procedures which are more robust there's always double checks and uh, if you look at the safety record of single pilot helicopters versus dual pilot helicopters it's not even close uh, so what the operations we're conducting up here in new england for offshore wind are not what folks think of as traditional offshore operations at least in the the sort of deep water sense that you'll see in the north sea or the gulf of mexico our flights typically cap at about 30 minutes uh, some of our short flights are as short as 13 to 15 minutes uh, for one of the wind farms that we service. Um, it's less like airline flying where you take off and fly in one direction for several hours. Things can happen really, really quickly. And as we go from an offshore substation to a turbine back to a crew change flight, uh, our crews are really forced to be very, very dynamic. They have to be able to make decisions on the fly. They have to be able to recalculate fuel payloads in very short order. So uh, the type of personnel we're recruiting have to be very experienced uh, to be able to handle that.